Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Baykar Baraktar TB2. The Baraktar TB2 is a medium altitude, long endurance, or male, unmanned combat aerial vehicle, UCAV, capable of remotely controlled or autonomous flight operations. It is manufactured by the Turkish company Baykar Makina Savini V. Taikerte AS, primarily for the Turkish Armed Forces. The aircraft are monitored and controlled by an air crew in a ground control station, including weapons employment. The development of the UAV has been largely credited to the Slok Bayaktar, a former MIT graduate student. As of November 2006, or November 26, 2021, the TB2 drone has completed 400,000 flight hours globally. The largest operator of the TB2 drones is the Turkish military, but an export model has been sold to the militaries of numbers of other countries. Turkey has also used the drone extensively in strikes on the Kur Kurdistan Workers' Party and the People's Protection Units targets in Iraq and Syria. The subsequent years, Raktar drones were deployed by a number of other nations around the world in various wars, such as the Azerbaijan in 2002, and the Nagomo uh, Karbakar War and the Ukrainian forces during the 2002 Russian invasion of Ukraine. I would say the TB2 here has definitely been more uh, popularized or fam famous diets by the current ongoing 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. This uh, drone has been used widely, pretty effectively, by the Ukrainians in actually slowing down advancing Russian forces, and uh, is really this drone has really proved itself to be a very capable drone for its size. Um, and is a uh, really kind of a standout drone uh, for sure. So a uh, really great successful drone and one that is continuing to see really good success um, in the war in Ukraine and uh, only going to just uh, increase the sales of this drone, I'm sure. Uh, but pretty cool drone and uh, has been requested a few times by some of you guys, so I thought I would go ahead and cover this. We just recently, um, a few weeks ago, did the... Um, Vince or something like that, uh, which is that really cool bird-like drone that's also made by the same company, and uh, they're definitely uh, definitely pretty good at making drones, to say the very least. So, should be a fun drone to add to your collections, and especially um, you know with its uh, popularity, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to find some enjoyment in it. We do have it done up in the Turkish colors, um, so that is what this drone is uh, originally designed for Turkey. So we do have the Turkish colors on it. However, you could put some Ukrainian um, colors if you really want to. Um, or any other nations, but uh, yeah, again, this is gonna have the Turkish markings. Um, so with that, let's go and dive in here and take a look at this drone. It's pretty simple and pretty small. I was actually surprised with how small this drone was, um, but it's a really small drone. It's got your armaments here, just uh, four pylons, um, some guided, uh, really basically bombs of uh, different sizes. Uh, we have our wings, the main kind of drone, um, you know, brain itself or fuselage, the propeller here, and then we have the basically tail section here so it's it's a really simple drone uh pretty simple we have a landed and in-flight version available for you guys which interesting about this aircraft is it does not seem that the rear gear retracts so the rear gear is kind of stuck in a permanent kind of down position um which you can see represented up there with our in-flight model uh but overall pretty cool drone again should make an awesome addition to your worlds and with current events i'm sure uh, many of you would be are gonna really enjoy building this um this aircraft. Anyway, so without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial, beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer, we will be going ahead and starting off with layer number three. Layer three is going to give us a better kind of outline and better basis to build off of uh, for the other layers, so that is why we're starting with this layer here. A few things I do want to mention is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the first thing I want to mention is that I will be doing this tutorial half on, half off. What this means is I'll be building the entire centerline of the aircraft, and then the right side will be up to you guys to copy the right side over to the left side. This aircraft is symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be done to the other. Um, in addition to that, if you do want to build this aircraft landed, you'll be more than um, able to do so. However, you will need to make sure that you um, build this a certain height off the ground. You can see here layer 3 of this build is sitting basically three blocks up from the ground level. You can see we have two blocks of space between layer 3 and the ground. Very important to make sure that's correct uh, because when you go to add your landing gear and all that stuff, it's not going to sit right. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Um, when you go ahead and get started building here, and again, that's for the landed version. If you're building this in flight, you can build this however high you want, as long as it's not going to run into the height ceiling. 
With that though, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a piston. If you are not on Java, I would recommend instead of a piston, placing down a stone stair instead. And to kind of show what I mean here, we will be placing down a stone stair. That'll look something like that. So I would recommend that as an alternative compared to that of the piston. From this uh, block here, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six stone full blocks. And then a stone stair here on the very end. After that's done, we're going to go and start working our way out to the sides here. We're going to place down a skeleton skull to the side of this block here, followed by an andesite wall. And then we want to place down one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks back, and a skeleton skull here on the end. Our next row is going to start by going ahead and going to our third stone block. We want to place down an upside down piston here to the side, like that. Instead of that piston, I would probably end up placing down stone top slabs instead. So I would place down a stone top slab instead of the piston as an alternative. And then we're going to place down a second piston back, and then a stone top slab. Our next section here is going to be a upside down piston that's going to be on the side of this one. So it's going to drop down like that again, stone top slab as an alternative, and then a stone top slab going back from that piston. We're going to place down two stone top slabs to the side here, as well as another two, and then two inside walls coming off these two stone uh, top slabs. And actually real quick, this first row of stone top slabs is actually going to be, we're going to delete that, and we're actually going to place down a row of stone stairs. So it's actually going to be one, two, stone upside down stairs like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our iron trap doors, and we want to go ahead and place down a row of iron trap doors. So one, two, and one, two, out to the side there for our wings. We're also going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door that's going to come off the side of this first stone block here, right after that andesite wall. We'll then grab ourselves some birchwood fence gates, and we're going to go ahead and go to this second stone top slab to the side here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate to the side of it, and then we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three more of those fence gates followed by two stone top slabs and then a chain on the very end there like so and that right there is going to complete everything we have there for layer three pretty simple and straightforward layer for my java players we will go ahead and, and actually uh we're going to hold off on that for right now um but yeah uh for our java players just keep in mind we will be doing something with those pistons a little bit later but that right there is going to include everything there is for layer three and with that we're going to drop down to layers one and two before we go and move into layers 1 and 2, I'm not sure exactly if I covered it or not, but also come off this piston going forward and place down a skeleton skull and end rod in a chain. So just make sure that those get transferred over as well, as I think I might have missed that in the um, previous uh, layer. Anyways, though, with that, we're going to go ahead and now move into layers 1 and 2. Now, for what layers 1 and 2 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and drop down to the bottom of this stone full block. We're going to place down an iron trap door. We're going to go ahead and then skip a space, like so, and then we're going to place down a light gray shulker box. Coming off the light gray shulker box, we're going to place down an item frame with a black bed vertically in the item frame. If you're on Java, we can also go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side of the shulker box to help hide that item frame a little bit and add a little bit more extra detail to this area. The item frame and sign are only able to be placed together if you are on Java, so just keep that in mind. Bedrock and Pocket Edition players will not be able to do this feature. But you can place down the item frame and uh, just disregard the sign. Going back from the shulker box, we're going to go and then place down an iron trap door, followed by an end rod, and then another iron trap door after the end rod. Once that's finished, we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the sides here. For this, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a lever that's going to be on the side of this stone block here, so right next to that end rod, and then we're going to place down an end rod right back from that lever like so. We then want to go ahead and go uh, basically down from the lever, and then we're going to build one and two blocks out to the side. We're going to go ahead and place down a block of coal, and then a lever on the side here like that. That's going to kind of presumably create that connection between our landing gear connected up to the fuselage. Now on this uh, landing gear here, uh, we want to go ahead and very simply, uh, you can either place down a stone button on the side there, or you can place down an item frame too if you're on Java, or rather you could just place down the item frame and the light gray stainless paint. So you can do that. You can do just a stone button, but for Java, we'll go ahead and do all three, or all, all the uh, options like that. So uh, just like that right there is going to make our landing gear. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then go back up to the front. And while we're on the topic of Java players, we're going to go ahead and uh, type in the command now, slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And by pressing enter, we'll get this glowing stick. What we want to do here is we're going to build a block that drops down from this piston. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a lever on both sides of the block. We'll then left click the lever until we get selected face, which should say wall. We're going to go ahead and right click it until it says ceiling. We're going to go ahead and then left click the lever again until we get selected facing. We'll then shift right click and we're going to go ahead and then rotate it so that it faces forward toward the nose there of our aircraft or toward basically the front. 
and we can go ahead and delete that block once we do that to both sides. Helps out a little bit of nice detail there. That is a feature that's going to be really only for Java players. Unfortunately, there really isn't no way, any way to really do that for Bedrock or Pocket Edition. Um, anyways, though, once that's done, we will go ahead and move into our armaments, which will be done on our pylons here. We're going to start off by going ahead and taking Dark Prismarine. We're going to place down two top subs on the bottom of those two stairs, as well as the zombie head on both sides. On the sides here, we're going to go ahead and also place down some Dark Oak Grid signs to make this bomb a little bit thicker. After that, we then want to go ahead and take our end rods, and we're going to place down two end rods on the bottom here of these walls, and then on both ends, we're going to place down a zombie head. So, again, just a little missile there on the very outer um, edges, of the, edges of the wing. And that right there is going to be really it for layers, um, you know, one and two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, or which will be layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector that's going to be on top of this block right here. We're going to go ahead and turn that daylight detector to that night mode like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab back from that, and then two pistons here for Java players. If you are not on Java, instead of placing these two pistons, I'd recommend probably a stone slab and then a stone stair, or a stone slab and a stone full block. Either one will work, uh, but the pistons here, again, going to be your best option. We're going to go ahead and place down a light gray shulker box, then a stone block back, and then a direct wall here on the very end. We're going to go ahead and build two blocks out to, from that direct wall, and we're going to go ahead and then place, or actually, sorry, three blocks out to the side. We're going to go ahead and delete the first two, and we're going to build a wither skeleton skull here, and then like that to go ahead and make our props that would go across there for um, the rear propeller. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door to the side of this um, daylight detector, and there are, daylight, or there are two daylight detectors here along the side, and then an iron trap door right after those, like so, as well as two skeleton skulls on the side of these blocks, like so. We're going to go ahead and take our debug stick, we're going to go ahead and right click those pistons if you have them, and we'll also go ahead and right click this piston up here in the front. These pistons here, we're also going to go ahead and right click for debug stick. Just make sure that your option you have is left click and you want to make sure you have the selected facing extended prompt available and that's when you're going to go ahead and right click. After that, we're going to go ahead and then take our stone stairs and we're going to go ahead and go up from these stone top slabs and inwards and we're going to place down two stone stairs just like that. After that is all complete there, we want to go ahead and then grab our iron trap doors and our acacia wood trap doors as well as our daylight detectors continued in our stone slabs and some chains here to go ahead and finish off the wings here for the build we're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors on top of those two stone top slabs then a second row of two on the iron trap or the inside walls then an acacia wood trap door here iron trap door and then again those acacia wood trap doors are going to be basically symbolizing the turkish air force randall so again you can swap those out if you're doing a ukrainian version or something of that uh, nature we're going to go ahead and place down two daylight detectors, again set those to the night mode, then a snare two rows of two out to the side here, again all set to the night mode. We then want to place down two rows of two of stone slabs, then go ahead and bring us to our very um, tips of our wing, and we're going to place down a chain on the stone slab here, and then this daylight light detector right there, we're going to place down those chains facing backwards like so. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for uh, this layer, layer number uh, four and with that we're going to be pretty much moving into our final layers here Which will be layers five and six so moving into our final layers here We could have probably just wrapped this up with layer number four um, Through six, but uh, yeah five and six real simple We're just gonna be going ahead and going back to our vertical stabilizers We're gonna go ahead and continue this pattern of going having our stairs go up like so and same thing over here And then at the very top here, we're just gonna place down our two anti walls They're gonna meet like that and then a chain that goes back from this wall toward the rear So that's literally all we have to do there for it um, again, if you do want to add that Turkish uh, Air Force symbol here on the side of the aircraft, you're more than welcome to as well by placing out a brick stair there um, instead of that stone stair. And again, you could swap those out for Ukrainian colors as well if you want to make this more of a Ukrainian-based drone. But that right there is going to complete the in-flight version there for the TB2. Um, at this point in time, I will be showing you guys how to add the landing gear onto the front. So if you are interested in um, that, then we'll be going ahead and covering that as well. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the forward landing gear. Alright guys, so going ahead and adding on the front landing gear, it's super simple to do. We're just going to be going ahead and going down to this section right here, and we're going to delete this iron trap door. In its place, we're going to place down a birchwood fence post, and directly below the fence post, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like so. We're going to go ahead then, uh, if you're on Java, we're going to place down a block that's forward of the skeleton skull by space of 1, and then we're going to place down a tripwire hook in that space. We're going to go ahead then use our debug stick here, left click until we get selected facing, and we're just going to go ahead and right click this around until it basically connects up to that stair. 
or rather that skull. So it should look something that looks just like that. And really, that's pretty much it for the landing gear. Uh, unfortunately, we, the doors are really so small that I'm not going to actually represent them uh, right there for that floor one. But basically, that's all you want to do there to go ahead and make the fully landed version. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude my tutorial here for the TB2. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use. Um, with that, uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This is me thinking from the side of the build, tweaking to my channel or this video. If this does appreciate social media sites, just make sure I get proper credit for it if you are going to use it. Um, it is much appreciated and continues to help my channel grow and all that stuff with my name being sent out there more and more. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is me here at 2x4 and I will see you guys next time.